everyone. This is the lecture for section 6.1, Power Series and Functions. So what we're gonna do for chapter six is we're gonna look at a particular type of series. We're gonna look at these things called power series, okay? Um, they have some really deep implications in some higher level mathematics topics, right? And in uh, physics and in computer science, okay? I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. Uh, the more, uh, the more applicable portions of power series come in physics and in, in computer science, okay? Uh, and I think you'll be seeing how useful this is uh, in, uh, in this section, okay? Uh, but before that, right, we have to define what a power series is, what we can do with it and all that stuff. So that's what uh, uh, section 6.1 deals with, okay? So let me start with the definitions first, okay? Uh, a power series is anything that looks like this, okay? Some cn times x to the n. So those c of n's are the uh, coefficients up front, right? Uh, and then it's actually an x to the n. So this is an infinite polynomial, okay? And it just keeps going and going and going. So there's, I stopped it right there at c sub three x to the third, but there's gonna be a c sub four x to the fourth, c sub five x to the fifth, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, uh, a little bit more uh, notation, a little bit more to my definition. You guys see how this is set up right here as opposed to this one right here, okay? The one up top, the very first one, right? Uh, we call that a power series that is centered at zero, okay? The one below in the blue, those are what we call a power series centered at a value x equal a. Okay, and you can see sort of the, the one that's centered at zero is basically a power series uh, of the blue kind, right? But it's centered at zero, so it's going to be x minus zero, so that's x to the n. Done. Okay, so uh, let me give you guys first an example. Let's start off with an example. I'm just going to write out the first five terms of this thing, right? And I'm not going to be too, too fancy schmancy with it. Um, it's just how you think it is. So it's going to be, notice that this one starts at zero, okay? So this is going to be equal to, right, uh, x minus three to the zero, right, plus x minus three to the first, plus x minus three quantity squared, right, plus x minus three to the third, plus x minus three quantity to the fourth, plus dot, 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 dot. It just keeps going. Okay, now something I need to point out since this is x minus three to the zero, that becomes just one. So you get just left with one, x minus three plus x minus three squared plus x minus three cubed plus x minus three to the fourth, right? Plus dot, 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 dot. It just keeps going. Okay, so what I want you guys to do for this first one is just. <clears throat> Write out the first uh, five terms, that's it, okay? Now, uh, I know I made a big deal about this before, but I'm gonna have to make it again here. Notice that this one starts at n equals zero. This one starts at n equal one, right? So uh, the ones up top, the evens, you guys are gonna actually have to deal with the zero, right? And the odds, you guys are get to deal with the just the one, right? So uh, just make sure that you're writing out the first five terms, right? and you're looking at whatever the n equals zero or n equal one is doing, okay? All right, uh, let's move on. Now, a power series is still a series, okay? And with any series, right, one of the big important questions that we wanna answer somehow, some way, right, is uh, whether or not a series uh, diverges or converges, right? Or if it does converge, what does it converge to? Right now, uh, for a power series, just like we have it defined up above, right? Uh, before we just had sort of the the sum of sort of particular terms. We had a sum of a sequence, right? Does that make sense? So it was just uh, the sum of numbers, right? In this case, we now have the added difficulty of having an x 
variable floating around in our power series. So now this convergence, right? Not only can it depend on um, the terms within the series, right? But it can also depend on an X value that we choose, right? So that brings up uh, an added difficulty, right? Uh, the majority of this chapter, chapter six, is going to be looking at uh, analyzing when these kinds of power series, when do they diverge, when do they converge, and in particular, right, what nice things happen when you converge, when they diverge, okay? So uh, let me move on to the theorem, okay? There is something that happens with these power series, right, that is real nice, okay? You only have three options for the convergence of a power series, okay? So suppose you have a power series, right? Then it has to satisfy one of three options, okay? Uh, the first option that uh, the series converges exactly at a specific point x equal a, and it diverges everywhere else, okay? Uh, the series converges for all real number x's, Okay, and then the last one, uh, there exists a real number zero such that, that's my typo, uh, the series converges if x minus a is less than r and diverges if x minus a is greater than r. Okay, and at points where x uh, minus a, the absolute value is equal to r, the series may diverge or converge. Okay, so. Let me summarize the three options really quick, right? Option one says that it just converges at a particular x value. Uh, option two says that it converges at all x values, right? Or item uh, number three, that your power series converges, right, over a specific set of numbers, okay? And then diverges everywhere else. Okay, so there's a picture that goes along with all of these. Okay, so that's what I want to show you guys. So the first one I want to do is number one. Okay, and let me do it using the letters that I have up there. There you go. Okay, so uh, the options are these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick down. Uh, let me get my keyboard. Uh oh. In prepping for my or lecturing like this, I throw my keyboard in different directions and then I have to go grab it when I need to draw stuff. Okay, so here is our number line, right? And here's my value x equal a, right? Our first option says that our power series converges at precisely that value x equal a and then it diverges everywhere else. So that means that around here from there, and on, so everything, and let me make this a little thinner, there we go. So everything that way, right? Everything that way, and everything this way, right? Your series, the sum, n equals zero to infinity of cn x minus a to the n, right? Diverges uh, oops, uh, as, n goes to infinity, okay? And then the same thing happens over here. So over here, the same thing happens. The sum as n equals zero to infinity of c sub n x minus a to the n diverges, right? As n goes to infinity, okay? And in particular, right? That was most of it, but you have this right here, right exactly at x equal a, right? Exactly at that point right there, you have that it converges. That this n equals zero to infinity of c n x minus a to the n at x equal a, right? As n goes to infinity. So this is the very first option, that it just converges at a point x equal a. That is it, okay? Option two, that one's a nice one, 
Okay. For option two, that one says that it converges for all real numbers. So uh, again, I'm going to grab this thing, throw a number line down. Okay. You have an X value, right? So this is X equal A, right? This one says that the sum N equals zero to infinity of CN X minus A to the N converges, right? Uh, for all X, right? as n tends to infinity. So it doesn't matter what x value I choose, okay? It doesn't matter which x value I choose, they all converge. As n goes to infinity, they all converge to a value, okay? So that's items one and two. Item three is the one that requires a little bit more work, okay? Item three states this. This one's the one that's a little heavier in terms of terminology. And I'm going to grab this and maybe pull it down a little. Eh, that's fine. Okay. Same thing, right? There's still a construction. Uh, this is going to be x equal a. All right. And it says, right, it states that there exists a real number r, big R, right, bigger than zero, such that it converges if x minus a is less than r. So that x minus a, absolute value, x minus a less than r means this, okay? That, and I'm gonna put parentheses, something like that here and something like this here, okay? Where this is gonna be some a minus big R and this is gonna be some a plus big R, big R, okay? such that, okay, within here, inside, inside of here, you have that the sum n equals zero to infinity of c n x minus a to the n, right, converges for x values, inside this interval, a minus r, uh, a plus r, okay? And this is the thing that we say is, so this distance right here, right, is gonna be the x minus a is less than r, okay? Okay, and as a similar, type of deal, right? Outside of this, right? The sum n equals zero to infinity of c n x minus a to the n diverges, right? As n goes to infinity. And then same thing over here, the sum n equal zero to infinity c n x minus a to the n uh, diverges. as n goes to infinity, okay? So what does this mean? That This means that for my x value, for my x value of the power series, right? If I choose anything in here, anything in here, okay? Uh, my power series will converge to a value for any x value within that green area that I just showed you, right? And then likewise, right, or, you know, opposite wise, I guess, if you choose any x value outside of that green area, either above or below, right, they are gonna diverge, okay? So it only converges in that green area, it diverges everywhere else, okay? So there's a little bit more of a, uh, there's a little bit more uh, terminology that we need to make up here. The first one is this, the interval of convergence, okay? The interval of convergence is that I equal A minus R, A plus R. So it's basically this little strip right here. This is what we call the interval of convergence, okay? So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go 
do a whoosh, right? Interval of convergence. Okay, and in particular, one more thing that we need to bring up is this radius of convergence. And the radius of convergence is that big R. So it's this distance essentially. It's the distance right here from down here to up here. And then this is also, right? So this is R, this is R, this is my radius. So the way that you would look at the radius of convergence, right, is that you know that it is, uh, that your radius of convergence is centered at, at x equal a, right? And if you draw, draw a circle around x equal a uh, of distance r, right, where the radius is r, that's why we call it a radius, right? Um, then it encapsulates your interval of convergence, okay? If you wanna know why we call it a radius of convergence, right, or a, or, you know, instead of something else, you're gonna need to go study for math for the rest of your life, okay? Um, so for now, this is all we really need, okay? Um, if the series converges only at A, right, that, then we say that the radius is zero. It's not, it's not a, uh, you know, there, there is no interval, so the radius is zero, right? And if it converges for all real numbers, we say that that radius is infinity. Okay? Okay, so. To determine radius of convergence for a power series, right? Uh, what we're gonna usually be using is uh, either the ratio test or the root test, one of the two, okay? Uh, go back to section 5.6 if you need to refresh yourselves on those processes, right? Um, there's also one more thing um, that for option three, right? We know uh, for option three, everything within my interval will converge. Everything outside of my interval will diverge, right? But what happens at my endpoints when the radius is equal to a value r, right? Um, to determine uh, convergence there, we actually have to sort of handle it on a case-by-case -case basis. And the way that we do that is we grab that radius, right, and uh, look at the resultant uh, uh, series, and then make a determination based off of that series. I'll show you guys what that means in a second, because I'm going to do an example here, okay? So let's start off with this easy one. Find the interval and radius of convergence for the following power series. So this is the power series that I showed you guys at the very beginning, right? Okay. So what we're going to use here is we're going to use uh, the uh, ratio test. Whoops. Let me write neatly, yeah? Use... We need to use the ratio test. So we're going to need to compute that row thing. The row is the limit as n goes to infinity of this, right? x minus 3 n plus 1 divided by x minus 3 to the n, right? If we reduce this, right? If we reduce this, this is going to end up being the limit Let me write that again, limit, as n goes to infinity, okay? Uh, there's one more x plus, x minus three on the top than on the bottom, so this reduces down to x uh, minus three, just flat out like that, right? Now, according to ratio test, right, a series converges if this, limit is less than one, okay? Now, notice how the limit portion, this bit, right? There is no n left in here, right? Inside the operation for the limit to do anything with, right? So, come on. This implies, right? That just so long as x minus three, right? Is less than one, it's convergent. Okay. And if you do this properly, okay, then you get that uh, the interval, right, 
if you solve this out, you're going to get 2 less than x less than 4. OK, so what this tells you is this, that the interval of convergence The interval of convergence is going to be from two to four, right? And it makes sense because it's centered at three. If you take a look at this thing, right, it is centered at three. Okay. Uh, the radius of convergence, right? Is R equal one. Since it's centered at three and it goes two and four, right? That radius that I was talking about, right, uh, is one. Okay, so we have most of it done. We're almost, we're almost there. So uh, we have the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. The only issue though, is we have to double check the endpoints. Okay, so remember option three said that, um, that convergence when uh, the radius is equal to one, right, is inconclusive, right? So we actually have to hand, you know, we have to actually like uh, look at what the series is uh, when we go out to that endpoint. So what I'm gonna do is this, okay? I'm gonna do uh, at x equal two first, right? I'm gonna take this series, right, uh, n equals zero to infinity, okay, of uh, two minus three to the n, n equals zero to infinity. So then two minus three, that's uh, negative one to the n, right? Okay. So that if you take a look at the series, this just bounces back and the terms bounce back bef uh, back and forth between negative one and one as n goes to infinity, right? So it's just gonna be something that looks like uh, one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one. So this, just by looking at, at it that way, right? You can tell that this is gonna be divergent. Okay, let me look at uh, x equal four, n equals zero to infinity, four minus three to the n. This is the sum n equals zero to infinity. This is gonna be one to the n, right? So if you take a look at this, right? One to any power is just gonna be one. This is just gonna be a one plus one plus one plus one plus one, right? Divergent. Okay. Uh, let me actually, in terms of the notation, so these two, right, these interval of convergences, right, were by ratio test, right? The problem became that we had to check these endpoints to see if they converged at the endpoints, right? That's what the x plus, uh, the x equal two and the x equal four were doing, okay? And we noticed that both of those are divergent. So final, right? Uh, my interval of convergence, oh. is going to be the two comma four, right? And the radius the radius of conversion convergence is going to be one. Okay. So now well, you guys are probably thinking to yourselves, all right, what do you mean by uh, radius of convergence? Like what's supposed what's this thing supposed to look like? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and do a double screen here. Uh, and I'm going to put Desmos up. OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my, uh, my sequence here. OK. So let me go down. 
So n equal zero, and I'm going to make it go to k, and I'm going to do this, x minus 3 to the n. OK, and I'm going to add a slider to sort of show you guys what's going to happen. OK, uh, and I'm going to make this 0. And I'm going to make it go up to 50. And so what this thing is going to do is it's going to compute uh, the first 50 terms and then just graph them for me. OK, and I want people to see what's going to happen here. Um, and is this already? Yep. OK. Um, I'm going to run this off. I'm going to make the cakes basically grow. OK. And I want everybody to see what's happening. OK. If you guys notice, at 3 exactly, it looks real nice, doesn't it? Right? And then it looks like it's going to shoot upward, right? But as I keep making my k bigger, right, that other end is just flopping back and forth, right? But let me zoom in on this portion. It's actually a pretty good double check for determining what's going on here, OK? So let me actually run this back to 0. So here's 0, right? And I'm taking it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, OK? Notice what's happening, that this graph, right, at the beginning, it doesn't look, there's a lot of oscillation at the beginning. There's a lot of change that's happening at the beginning, right? But as I go farther and farther, as my k gets farther and farther out, right, as my series, my partial series gets farther and farther out, that little portion around 3, right, from 2 to 4 settles down, right? It settles down to something very, very, very uh, calm. There's nothing that happens. It doesn't, there's not much change after what, maybe 7, 8, when k equals 7, 8, right? OK, so notice what this is saying, right, that the, this is what it means for it to converge, that it settles, that it settles nicely, right? Make sense? OK, so this is a good double check because we're going to need this later um, to determine whether or not your interval of convergence is correct or not. OK. OK. So we're going to use that again in a little bit. Uh, so my final answer for this one, actually, let me finish that off, is this right here. There we are. OK. Let me do another example. Find the radius of convergence for the following power. So this one looks a little, a little harder, right? So again, like I said, when we do uh, radius of convergence and the interval of convergence, uh, we're going to be either using the ratio test or the root test. OK, this one looks like a pretty good candidate for the root test or sorry, the ratio test. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So uh, by ratio test, right? By ratio test, uh, we need to compute the row is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 for x minus 8 to the n plus 1 divided by the whole thing, 2 to the n divided by n for x minus 8 to the n. And we need the absolute value. OK? This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. And if you do it right, so I'm going to let you guys uh, tackle that. If you do it right, you should get something along the lines of 2 times uh, n over n plus 1 times uh, 4x minus 8. So when all is said and done, when you reduce it all down, you should get this right here. The limit as n goes to infinity of that thing right there, OK? Now, the limit only applies to the thing with Vn, this thing right here, right? OK? 
okay? And it, more importantly, right, again, because we're doing this out of ratio test, right, uh, this series converges if this limit is less than one, right? So if we apply the limit as n goes to infinity to this thing right here, this right here, that's going to be one. So then therefore we have this, uh, two, and I'm going to put the this thing, four x minus eight has to be less than one. Okay, if you solve this bit out, if you solve this out, right, you get the following. You're gonna get uh, that x has to be bigger than 15 over eight, right? And it has to be smaller than 17 over eight. Okay, solve it out. Uh, this means that you're gonna be doing a little bit of pre-calc, so split them up, right? Okay, so we have this now, right? Uh, by uh, ratio test, right? By, by ratio test, we have the interval. Whoa, let me write that nicer, huh? The interval of convergence is gonna be exactly what we have here. Uh, 15 over eight. 17 over eight, right? And the radius of convergence is if you take a look at this, so the middle number, the middle right here, at 16 over eight, that's gonna be two, right? So R is equal to two. Oh, sorry, uh, R is one eighth. Oh man, I got special there. Uh, the, the radius of convergence is one eighth. And the reason why, if I'm gonna write that in anyway, you know that the middle here is two because of this right here. So if you, four X minus eight, if you solve that when it's zero, right? Um, you're gonna get that it's gonna be X equal to two, right? There you have it. Okay, so just from ratio test, we have these two bits of information right here. The interval of convergence is gonna be 15 over eight to 17 over eight, and that radius of conversion, uh, convergence, right, is gonna be one eighth, right? <clears throat> but now we have to test whether they converge, right? We have to test whether this thing converges uh, at the endpoints, at these points right here. Whoops. At these points right here, at the 15 over 8 and the 17 over 8. Okay. So to do that, we have to plug them in just like we did in the previous one. So I'm going to put right here at x equal 15 over 8. Right? Uh, we have to write out the sum n equals zero to infinity of two to the n divided by n, 15 over eight. So 15 over eight uh, minus eight to the n, right? Uh, that's gonna be 64 over eight, right? Let me get my calculator out, yeah. Oh, and look at me, I forgot a four. Four times 15 over eight uh, minus eight to the N, right? Uh, this is gonna be two times, what's this gonna be? Ah. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of mental math in my head right now. Two to the N over N. 15 over two minus eight to the N, right? 
what you get left with here is going to be equal to uh, 2 to the n over n, right, times 1 half, and it's going to be a negative 1 half, yeah, negative 1 half to the n. Okay, this is equal to, this is a, just a bunch of reducing to infinity, uh, 2 to the n over n times negative 1, and I'm going to put this to the n over 2 to the n. And look what happens here. This cancels this, and you get left with sum n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n. This is the alternating harmonic series, and this converges. I believe that's section 5.4, OK? So don't, go ahead and double check that if you haven't, uh, if, you, if it's uh, a little, if you don't remember it really quick, right? OK. We're now going to do the exact same thing for the other endpoint. So now I'm going to do at x equal 17 over 8, right? n equals 0 to infinity, 2 to the n over n, 4 times 17 over 8 minus 8 to the n. OK, now I'm going to have this sum n equals 0 to infinity, uh, 2 to the n over n. That's going to be 17 over 2 minus 8 to the n. This is going to be the sum n equals 0 to infinity. This is a lot of math in here, so just keep a track of everything. Uh, whoops, 2 to the n divided by n times 1 half to the n. This, if you simplify it down right, n uh, equals 0 right, to infinity of 1 over n. This is not the alternating series test, right? It is the regular vanilla, um, sorry, it is not the uh, alternating harmonic series, right? It is the vanilla harmonic series, right? And this one diverges. You guys see that? So I'm gonna highlight a couple of bits of information here that at one endpoint, right, it converges, but at the other, it diverges, right? So then that means, right, when we do our interval of convergence, we actually get to include one of the endpoints, okay? Uh, so, I'm going to do this. I have a niece over. Sorry. It sounds like she's getting chicken nuggies. So we, we might be left alone for a little while. So. By checking endpoints, now we get to modify my interval of convergence. The lower end, right, since now it converges, I get to include that one. So it's going to be 15 over 8, right? But the upper endpoint, it still diverges. I get to leave that one out. So it's going to be 17 over 8 round bracket. OK. Uh, the radius of convergence is still the same, though. It is still r is equal to 1 over 8. So my final answer for this would be these 
right here. After I do the uh, after I do the uh, uh, ratio test and after I check each one of the endpoints. Okay, so now, again, since we did it graphically, right, I do want to show you guys what it's supposed to look like graphically. So let me, uh, and that, so we know what this thing is supposed to be. Uh, two to the N, divided by, whoops, divided by n, and I'm going to do uh, 4x minus 8 to the n. Okay, and let me bring this out a little bit. And why is it not showing up? Ah, that's why. Typo, typo. I'll change this hopefully in your notes. The n is supposed to be n equal one. Hopefully you guys see why. I can't plug in zero at the bottom. Okay, so that's my bad. It's supposed to be n equal one. Now I've got my thing on my bottom. There we go. Okay, so now let me zoom in a little bit. And we know that this thing is gonna be centered at x equal two. So I'm gonna zoom in enough so that we get it at x equal two, right? There we go. Now I'm going to let my k start floating upward to 50, right? So I'm going to be doing uh, the partial sums, right, of this uh, series. And I want you guys to look at what's happening to the purple graph there, right? So I'm going to start going. It's start going. Look at what's happening. So it's at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Da, da, da. There it is. Whoops. Not what I wanted. There we go, okay. Look at what's happening. It's practically solid, right? You guys take a look. It's practically solid at around an area around two, right? So let me show you guys a little more. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, our radius of convergence that we found, right, was 15 over eight, 17 over eight. So 15 over eight is just before two, right? Cool. And 17 over eight is just after two, right? And look at what's happening. It's it's already pretty solid. It 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 settles. The graph settles. You guys see how it settles after a particular distance, right? Outside of that, it's still squiggling. Like I want to say, like maybe outside of this point right here. You guys see that? Outside of that point right there, right? I can keep moving this over, and it's still squiggling. It's still sort of moving, right? And over here, right, at this end, it's probably like around right here, right, where it's solid, but the rest after that, it squiggles a lot. Like it just jumps back and forth. You guys see that? Actually, maybe that snap point right there. There it is, right? You see that? So this is a good way of double checking if your radius of convergence and your interval of convergence or the problems that you're doing are working out. Okay. Okay. So now what I want you guys to try to do is, uh, you know what these uh, power series look like, right? You, you know the first couple of terms. I want you to try out the power series that, uh, that you guys tried out at the very beginning. And this is my typo. That B is not supposed to be there. Uh, there we go. Gone. OK, we'll try these out. OK, any problems again, come by and uh, we'll uh, figure some out. OK, moving on. So there's something nice that happens with power series. OK, um, and that nice thing that happens is what we call Taylor series. These Taylor series are things that we're going to cover in section 6.3. OK. Now, what I want everybody to look at, what I want everybody to realize is this. I'm going to uh, grab the information that we had for a geometric series from, I think this was section 5.1, 5.2, right? We know that we have a geometric series, right? If we have a geometric series, then uh, we can write it out this way. Uh, the subsequent terms, right? They look like this, right? 
and it converges to that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take a specific type of uh, series. I'm going to take this one, this power series right here, right? And I'm going to start writing it out so that it looks like the geometric series, right? So I stuck a one in there. It's going to be one times because one times anything is still itself, right? So that's cool. And actually, this is supposed to be zero, uh, right? And I get this series, right? Which is this summation right here, right? And we know that it because it converges, right? It's supposed to converge to that a divided by one minus r. My a in this case is one. Use my one, right? And it's gonna be one minus whatever that r is, right? And that r in my case is just the x. Okay. So this means we have this following inequality right here. This equality means, right, that I can represent the function one divided by one minus x as a power series. So this function right here, f of x is equal to one divided by one minus x is equivalent to writing out this power series, okay? Which is pretty cool. Hopefully you guys see why that is, okay? Now, on the in the picture on the right, uh, I do f of x is one divided by one minus x, and then the blue one is this right here. This is the first five terms of that power series, right? And if you take a look, right, over this strip right here, over this strip right here. Those graphs, those two functions look about the same. Those two functions look about the same. Now, this really doesn't do it too much justice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back Desmos. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna clear this out and clear this out. And I'm gonna put in the two functions. I'm gonna put one divided by one minus X I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see what the graph is. Okay, there it is. And now I'm going to put in my uh, power series. So I'm going to go to functions. I'm going to put in the summation, zero to k, so I can do the, the partial, right, of x to the n, right? It's going to ask me for a slider. I'm going to say sure. Okay, so here is the two graphs, right? Actually, let me make it bigger. And is this thing all right, already the best contrast possible? So we have both of the functions, the red one being my function one divided by one minus x, right? And the blue one is going to be my power series. And so now I'm going to let this thing, I'm actually going to change this to zero and this to 50. OK. And what I want you guys to see is what happens as my k starts to uh, go off to 50, right? So I'm going to start dragging this along. Look at what happens. You guys can see that it starts to bounce back and forth, right? And over here, right, in the area maybe what, a, about like right before 1 and on, right? Uh, basically this strip right here, way up here. It's getting closer and closer, right? Not exactly, but it just keeps getting closer and closer. You guys see that, right? Closer and closer and closer, right? And then let me take a look at this spot over here at around one, right? If I start sort of going off, you know, closer and closer to 50, that end just starts bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down. But right before that, maybe about like what? right here, maybe negative 0.9, right? It looks solid, right? It's before point, uh, uh, negative 0.9, right? So anything bigger than negative 0.9, it looks pretty solid, right? It, there, there's not much changing happen, happening at that point, right? 
And then let me zoom out again. You can sort of kind of see, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to zero. Actually, you know what? Let me click on that one to animate it, huh? Uh, come on, play, there we go. And now let it go back. There we go. If you guys see, right, between that section that looks like maybe about, what, negative one to one, right? It matches up with my f of x, right? It matches up with one over one minus x. It matches up very nicely, okay? So the big conclusion here, right, is that we now have a power series, right, that it's hugging an actual function, a very simple function, right, very, very closely. OK, so that is the idea of Taylor series once we get there. OK, but for now, you guys see what this is sort of heading for, right? Uh, around a small portion around x equals zero, right? Both functions are really, really equal, right? So this is two things that happen. These are two observations or two comments that show up after we get this kind of uh, after we you know do just that one just that one example, two big observations. Number one, right? Uh, for the picture that I gave you guys, right? This one, this one was just for the first five terms. If I go out farther, right? Well, my f of x and my g of x, right? Will my actual function and the power series get any closer? As you guys can uh, saw from my, uh, from the Desmos demonstration, they do, okay? So, if we go farther than five terms, will it get closer? Yes, it will, okay? And second, all I did just now, right, was for a particular power series, because we were using the geometric series, right? Um, for a particular power series and a, for a particular function, right? That happens just with that function. But now the question is, if it happens for that function, can it happen for any other functions, right? That is, do we have other f of x functions, right? Such that a power series can approximate these other functions. Those uh, questions are uh, answered when we actually study uh, Taylor series and Maclaurin series. That's gonna be section uh, 6.3, 6.4, okay? Now, for now, okay, just to get us warmed up, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a couple of these. Okay. So, find the power series expansion for a function defined below, right, at x equal 5 and determine its interval convergence. So, what we want to do is, this is the function. This is my function, right? We want to maybe create, we want to sort of try to create a sum n equals zero to infinity of something, right? X minus five to the n. We want something like this to show up, okay? This is what we want to show up. So we need to modify this somehow, right? so that we can get something that looks like this, because we want this transformation to happen. We want something that looks like stuff divided by one minus, and I'm gonna put this in parentheses here and I'm gonna put it in quotations, X minus five. We want something that has an X minus five in there, right? And some other stuff. It doesn't matter what the other stuff is, so long as we get that X minus five in there. So what we have to do is we have to manipulate this thing so we can get x minus 5. Okay. So here's how it happens. Okay. You guys ready? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. 1 over 2 minus x. I'm just repeating what's here, right? I'm going to do plus 5 minus 5. Okay. I am adding 0 to the denominator, so that means nothing changes. Right, but there's a reason why I'm adding the zero. Okay, and it's a means to an end. I'm going to go ahead and move this on 
uh, one over, I'm gonna do some simplification here. It's gonna be minus three, right? Minus X minus five. So we're getting that X minus five. We need to turn, if you guys remember, this is our sort of end goal right here, right? We want stuff divided by one minus something with X minus five. And we're almost there. That minus three, we have to turn into a one somehow, right? We have to turn that one into something. So this is how it's gonna happen. Okay, one over, I'm gonna factor out that one, uh, that negative three on the bottom, right? And what that does, it turns it into one plus, right? Uh, X minus five over three. Let me write that nicer, huh? One over negative three, uh, one plus X minus five, over three. Got it? Okay, a little bit more sign manipulation in particular. One over negative three. One minus, okay, and this is completely valid. Try it out. X minus five over negative three. So that positive, this thing, I basically split it up into two negatives, right? And then I gave the negative to the bottom, completely valid. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more thing here. This is equal to one over negative three times one over one minus X minus five divided by negative three. This piece right here is now converted into what I want. From here, I can change it into my power series. I can go to the in the backwards direction. I, I have this, right? I have this, and I can turn it into something like that, okay? And the way that happens is basically the backwards argument for the geometric series that we were doing from before. One over negative three, okay? Sum n equals zero to infinity, x minus five over negative three to the n. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more cleanup. I'm gonna bring the one third in. After I do this though, so it's gonna be one over negative three, sum n equals zero to infinity of one over negative three to the n, x minus five to the n. Okay, and this is equal to sum, sum n equals zero to infinity of one over negative three so the n plus one, I'm bringing that negative one third inside times x minus five to the n. We good? All right. So just as a double check, okay, just as a double check, we are hoping that this power series and this function are about close at x equal five, right? So if I put both of these, if I put the power series in and the function itself in the Desmos, right? And graph them, they should be about equal at x equal five. So let's go ahead and double check that. I'm gonna clear these out. And there's a reason why I'm sort of clearing them out and then putting them in every time just to get you guys to see what I'm doing here. One divided by uh, two minus X, okay? And I'm actually gonna change the color on this so that it'd be the red one, right? And I'm gonna put in my Taylor or my power series that I just found. So functions, I'm gonna go all the way down to the summation, N equals zero. I'm gonna make it up to K, right? Uh, one divided by, divided by 
negative three to the n plus one, whoops, ah, I remember, n plus one, put your parentheses in if things aren't working right, times x minus five to the n. And it's asking me for a slider, so I'm gonna add for the slider. So, and I'm gonna change the color so I can make this blue to contrast, there we go. So the hope, right, is that I had two, well, I had a function, right, the red one, and then the power series, they should match up at around x equal minus five. So the hope now is, I'm gonna make this zero to 50. The hope, right, is that I should be able to slide this k all the way over to 50, and it should match up just about at x equal five right here, right? So let's go ahead and try it. it. It looks promising right now. And if you go ahead and run it, look at that, look at that. It's matching at around x equal five, right? So now, let me make this run through. Yep, that one. Play, there we go. Bam. Okay, so this is showing us a fair amount already. If you guys take a look, right? It's matching uh, the two functions, right? My power series and the function are matching at around x equal five, right? And if you take a look, it looks like maybe up until x equal two to x equal eight, right? That's where it's really matching. And then outside of that, it's sort of going a little crazy. It's not exactly, you know, squishing in right. You guys see that? So this leads me to believe that the radius of convergence, right, looks like it might be three, right? And the interval of convergence should be something around two to eight, right? So now that we know what this thing's supposed to be doing, let's go ahead and solve it out. So, whoa. Went too far. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the radius of convergence, right? So the radius and uh, interval of convergence. So uh, to do this, right, we have to use, again, we can use ratio test or root test. Doesn't matter which one. I'm going to use ratio test because that's a nicer one, okay? Uh, ratio test. I use ratio test, I need to do rho limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of one over, oh, let me make it look nice at least, right? Uh, one over negative three to the n plus two in this case, times x minus five to the n plus one divided by, right? one over negative three n plus one x minus five to the n. Okay, this reduces down to, right? The limit as n goes to infinite infinity, absolute value of one over three x minus five, if you reduce it all the way down, right? According to ratio test, right? According to ratio test, our uh, series converges if this is less than one, right? Since n has no business uh, in our limit anymore, right? This tells me, right, then, and it's supposed to be a negative three, then uh, what this tells me is it's gonna be this, right? Now, one third, x minus five is less than one, right? Or, right, x minus uh, five has to be less than three. And you guys see what happened there, right? Remember what I said uh, when we were looking at the, uh, when we were looking at Desmos just now, it looked like the radius of convergence was gonna be three because it was going from two to eight, right? 
And that's exactly what ended up happening, right? So this tells us right here, right, that our x uh, variables, right, when it's less than three, it's gonna be between eight and it's gonna be between two, right? So we have the following now. Let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, we have a uh, biratio test, right? By ratio test, uh, interval of convergence is going to be two to eight, right? And the radius of convergence is going to be r is equal to three. And that's just from ratio test, right? Boom. OK. Again, this is where it's going to be converging. We now need to determine the endpoints. We now need to determine the endpoints. So we need to plug in two and eight into our series and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to do it over here. So at uh, x is equal to two, let's find out what happens. So it's going to be that, whoa, well, the sum n equals zero to infinity of one over negative three to the n plus one, two minus five to the n, right? This is gonna be sum n equals zero to infinity, uh, one negative three n plus one times, what's that gonna be? Um, a minus three? So the n equal to sum n equals zero to infinity of, I'm gonna do this, uh, one to the n plus one divided by negative three to the n plus one times negative three to the n. Hopefully you guys are following along, right? Uh, and that's equal to sum n equal zero to infinity of one n plus one divided by, right? Negative three. There's just the one negative three on the bottom that gets left over, right? Now, if we look at this series, right? It's just gonna be uh, negative one third, right? plus another negative one third, plus another negative one third, plus another negative one third. So it's gonna be one negative one third, plus negative one third, plus negative one third, plus negative one third. That thing diverges. You guys see what I mean by um, getting a gut intuition, right? Okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. At x equal eight. Our last endpoint, right? Uh, sum n equals zero to infinity, one over negative three to the n plus one, eight minus five to the n, sum n equals zero to infinity, one over negative one over negative three. And you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and break it up to n plus one n plus one, three, to the n. <clears throat> Got it? Okay, watch this. n equals zero to infinity, one to the n plus one over negative one, n plus one, three, n plus one. That's still valid. <clears throat> three to the n. Let's simplify it a little more. If you guys take a look, there's only one three that gets left behind from this set right here, right? So when I have this thing left over, it's gonna be a sum n equals zero to infinity, right? Of one third. 
times negative one to the n plus one. Actually, that's supposed to be in parentheses on its own. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, and this Okay, and this right here, right, if you take a look at, if you just think about the series that we're looking at right here, right, if you think about this series, it's going to be one third, right, there's nothing, there's no n attached to the one third, right, so it's just going to be a positive a third, right, minus a negative a third, right, plus a positive a third, minus a negative a third, plus a positive a third, minus a negative a third, plus a positive a third, minus a negative a third. So this thing just keeps the terms just is gonna be either positive a third or negative a third, right? And you're adding those things together. So this right here diverges as well, right? So we have this at X equal two, right? The series that arises diverges. Okay, and at x equal eight, the series that turns up also diverges. So, right, so now I'm gonna go over here, right? I'm gonna do by checking endpoints, right? By checking endpoints, nothing changes. The interval of convergence remains two to eight to eight. Whoa, two to eight. Right, and the radius of convergence remains as r equal three. Boom, this is my final answer. It's actually two things, let me Go ahead and do my radius of convergence, right? And my power series expansion for my initial function is this right here, is this one right here. Let me move that up a little bit. There we go. So let me summarize sort of a little bit what I did here, yeah? And this is a lot. This is a lot of stuff. Okay. So if you need to rewatch this, go ahead and do so. Okay. So what we did, right, is this. We wanted to find a power series expansion that matches this function. Right. And we wanted to find it. Let me scoot up a little bit. We wanted to find a power series expansion for that f of x centered at x equal 5. Okay, that power series expansion is this right here. The one over negative three to the n plus one times x minus five to the n. <clears throat> okay, so the power series expansion for our function is that right there. Okay, the next question is when, right, and for what x values, uh, does that power series converge to my original function, my one over two minus X, right? And that's what all of this work down here is for, right? Looking at what we did, right? We had to use the ratio test to determine when it converged, right? And now based off of my interval of convergence, I need to double check my endpoints to see if it actually converges at my endpoints as well. It didn't converge at either one of my endpoints, so the information that I got from my ratio test sort of held water. That's that's going to be my interval of convergence and my radius of convergence. So my two green functions, my f of x, right, and my power series, right, converge at these x values right here with these 
endpoints. Okay. Not bad, right? Not bad. Okay. I think I have one more example. I do. I do have one more example. So, excuse me. Let me drink some water. So now, if this doesn't just work just for those, you know, simple monomial ones, I'm going to do another one here that looks fairly similar. Well, that looks actually nothing close to it, but the process is similar, okay? So well, let's say I want to find a power series expansion for this function centered at x equals zero, right? So I want something that looks like this. And my power series expansion is going to look like this. n equals zero to infinity. It's going to have some c to the n, but it's going to be x minus zero to the n, something like this, right? Right, or just plainly, let's just get rid of the x minus zero and just gonna be x to the n, something like this, right? We have to cook something up here so that we get something like this. So that means we have to do something along the lines of, we gotta reduce this somehow or do something to it so that we show up. So something like this shows up one over, um, one minus and then stuff here that has just X somehow in there, right? Okay, so here's the modifications, here's the manipulation for this function to get us there, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my two X squared, pop it out, okay? So it's gonna be this, two X squared, right? Times one over one plus X cubed. Okay, two x squared, that's gonna remain outside. I'm gonna manipulate that, that positive that's in the denominator. I'm gonna do this, one over one minus a minus x cubed. And here we have it. You guys see this? This is the thing, this is the magical thing that we needed right here, okay? Because then I can use that to turn it into my power series. That's gonna be equal to, 2x squared times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of minus, whoops, minus x cubed to the n. A little bit more cleanup. Uh, 2x squared, whoa, sum. Uh, n equals zero to infinity. This is gonna be a negative one to the n times x to the three n. Okay, a little bit more cleanup. Uh, sum, n equals zero to infinity. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the two x squared and pop it inside the summation. So it's gonna go in here somewhere, right? And just so work this out if you need to, it's gonna be two, right? Times negative one to the N times X to the three N plus two. Boom. So this right here should be our power series. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do exactly what I did before, right? Uh, let me bring in, let me do a double screen here. Boom. And boom. I'm going to put my f of x in. So 2x squared, right, divided by, whoops, uh, divided by 1 plus x cubed. Okay, here we are, right? And now I'm going to put my power series in, uh, summation. I said, this is a double check, right? Uh, N equals zero to K. I wanna do a, the partials, right? Two, 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 uh, negative one to the N. And then my power series was three N. So X to the three N, whoa, whoa, whoa. Three N plus two. And it's going to ask me for a slider. I'm going to say, yeah, sure. Here we are. Okay. Let me, yep. It reverted back. There we go. 
Okay, so let me bring this to the forefront so you guys can see what's going to happen here. Okay. Uh, ah, I need to go over here. I'm going to make this go from zero. I make it go to from zero to 50 because that's all you really need, but you can make it go to 100. No big deal. And I'm going to make the steps this time go to one. So now I'm going to let this thing dance and you guys will see what's going to happen, right? Hopefully you guys see what's going to happen. So the double check says that if I let this play on, right, that my power series, my blue line, right, should start equaling my red line, right, fairly quickly. They, that both graphs should match up, right? So let's see it. So I'm going to hit play. There we go. It's going off. It's going off. Whoa, look at that. So let me make this a little tinier this way. If you guys take a look at what's happening, right, my blue graph is matching up pretty close to my red graph, right? And if you look at this, it's already giving us uh, the appropriate interval of convergence and radius of convergence. So we can see that this thing is looking like it's converging, right, at zero, and the, the bit that is converging is from negative one to positive one. So it looks like if we do all our math right, our interval of convergence is supposed to be something from negative one to positive one. Okay. So let's try this out. Yeah, so let me stop, let me pause it. All right, so now that we know what our, make sure that, yeah, okay. Now that we know what we're supposed to be getting, right? Let's go ahead and do the actual interval of convergence, okay? So again, to find the interval of convergence, right? I'm gonna do by ratio test. I'm gonna use ratio test. So then that means I need to compute a row. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of two, negative one, n plus one, uh, x to the three, n plus one plus two, whoops, plus two, over two, negative one, n, x to the three n uh, plus two, absolute value of all of that stuff, right? Okay. <clears throat> and you get left with, you do all this right, right? I'm gonna do a bunch of reduction here. Uh, limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of negative one, uh, negative one, times x cubed. And just like ratio test says, right? Uh, a series converges if this is less than one. So then that means, notice that this thing right here, right? The limit no longer has an n thing in it. So that just turns into x to the third has to be less than one, right? So then, x has to be less than one. So therefore, right, the x values where it should converge is negative one x to one, if you solve this out, and there you have it, right? So our interval of convergence right, our interval of convergence is supposed to be uh, negative one to one right, and our radius of convergence should be r equal one. All right, we're getting closer. We're almost done. I know this, I know this uh, video is really long. So now we know where it's supposed to converge, right, just from a uh, ratio test, okay? Um, but now we need to check our endpoints our x equal negative one and our x equal positive one. So let's go ahead and do that. So at x equal negative one, 
right? Our summation n equals zero to infinity is gonna be two, negative one to the n. And now it's gonna be negative one to the three n plus two. This is gonna have a little bit of, uh, yeah, let me do this, uh, equal sum n equals zero to infinity. Uh, use your uh, um, exponent rules here. You're gonna get two, negative one, or n plus two, which is equal to the sum n equals zero to infinity of just two. Now, you guys are probably thinking what the hell went wrong here? See that thing right there? Uh, for any n value you give it, right? Uh, 4n plus 2 is always going to be even. So and that means that negative 1 is going to be to an even power, which means it's going to be positive 1 no matter what n you put in it. So and that's why it disappears. Right? So we get that summation. You take a look at this, right? It's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus obviously diverges. Let's do the next one. Sum n equals 0 to infinity 2, negative 1 to the n, right? 1 to the 3n <clears throat> plus 2, right? Uh, the one to the three n plus two, that's one to some odd, some whatever power, right? One to any power is still one. So then this becomes just sum n equals zero to infinity of two times negative one to the n, right? So this is gonna be a positive two, minus two, plus two, minus two, plus two, minus two, plus two, minus two, guess what? That diverges. So let me go ahead and uh, highlight some stuff. At x equal negative one, our series diverges. And at x equal positive one, our series still diverges, right? Make sense? So then that means I don't have to do any extra work. I mean, I just needed to do the extra work to check the endpoints, but it doesn't change my final answer right here, this right here. Boom, got it? So let me summarize really quick, right? Just like I did in the previous one. I want a function, right? Or I'm given a function, two uh, x squared divided by one plus x cubed, I've got that function, and I want to find a power series expansion, right? That matches it. Okay. The one that does it is this one. The one that does it is this one. I still need to determine, right, uh, where it matches is very good, right? Where it matches is very well. Um, that's when we have to do the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Got it? and it matches it really well on negative one to one, not including the endpoints where my radius of convergence is one. So this means that between negative one and one, between these two values right here, right? These two functions, this power series and my original function are indistinguishable. They're essentially equal. Okay, we'll get more into this when we get to um, when we have to do Taylor series and Maclaurin series. We're getting really close to that. Okay, this has, like I said, big huge implications in physics, big huge implications in higher level math, and in uh, computer science. Okay, all right, and I believe that is it. What comes next is lecture question. Okay, so. Uh, Go ahead, do these. If you guys have any problems with any of these, uh, stop by my office hours, uh, come by my Friday time. 
uh, or plain, plainly just you know send me an email. We'll figure them out. Okay. Uh, besides that, I am done here. Happy studying.